Luke chapter number 1. This morning in Sunday school we uh, talked about the word behold in, in the Christmas story, or really in the life of Christ. Tonight I want to show you four particular characters or a group of characters in the Christmas story or surrounding the Christmas story. And we want to use the uh, uh, words fear not. To each of these people, the words fear not was said to them, and why was that said to them? Uh, and and uh, it's, I just think it's a, it's a great story here tonight as we see. Look at Luke chapter 1 and verse number 13. Luke chapter 1 and verse number 13. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. All right, so this is the first instance that we have here tonight of fear not. Now, what does that have to do with? Well, go back to verse number 5, if you would. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest office, his lot was to burn incense when he went to the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. All right, so we have Zacharias and Elizabeth, old people, <laughs> having babies. All right, they had never been able to have a child, and they wanted to have a child. They had wanted to have a child all their life, and now their prayer was being answered. And when the angel appeared to Zacharias, you know, he was fearful. And when the angel told him what was getting ready to happen, boy, he was really fearful. And the angel said, fear not. Okay, that's the first instance, and we'll come back to that. Look at Luke chapter 1 and verse 30. Luke chapter 1 and verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Now, I think all of you know that story, but let's go back to verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her. Of course, if an angel appeared to you tonight, you'd be fearful too, right? Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, shall be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. All right, so here we have the second occurrence of fear not surrounding the Christmas story. We have Zacharias number one with the birth of John. Secondly, Mary. The angel appears to her, and the angel says to her, Fear not. She's very fearful. And he tells her that she's getting ready to have a baby too. So here we have it. All right, the third one is found in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse number 10. Luke 2 and verse number 10. And the angel said unto them, and here the them is the shepherds. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. All right, go back to verse 8. Get the background of the story. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. All right. So, the message to the shepherds, fear not, fear not. So we have this Christmas story going on here. We got John the Baptist, we got Jesus being born, Mary, Zacharias, Elizabeth, the shepherds, fear not, fear not. 
Well, there's one other one. Go back to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter number 1. And you probably already know who this one's about, don't you? Matthew chapter number 1. Verse 20, Matthew 1, 20. But while he, he's talking about Joseph, thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying. All right, so the angel comes. Everybody gets scared. The angel tells them something. They get scared. And then the Bible tells us uh, this. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. All right, I think you know the story. Go back to verse number 18, though. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, God's ways are not our ways tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I preached this morning about God messing with your plans. God's ways are not our ways. Amen. Just mark it down. They're not. Uh, uh, you know, you, say, you think sometimes you want to be God. You better just be glad you're not God. Uh, uh, and you better be glad that God is God. God's ways are not our ways. God does things His way. And as I mentioned this morning, God will mess with our plans uh, sometimes. And then you know what He tells us? Fear not. That's what He says. He messes with our plans. He intrudes into our, in our, our life. Circumstances, all these things going on here, all of a sudden God, in, in the form of an angel of course, but the angel of the Lord appears to them intrudes into their life, Zacharias, Mary, the shepherds, Joseph, tells them something, and then he says, fear not, fear not. So I say to you tonight, you know what the message is from, from God to us tonight? On no matter what comes into our life, no matter what's going to happen tonight, no, no matter what happens tomorrow, no, no matter what happens next week or whatever, fear not, fear not. And, and, and we'll talk about that as we go along. Now, the events leading up to our Lord's birth are unusual to say the least. A little bit unusual, okay? Think about this. Zacharias and Elizabeth, when they were well stricken in years, had a baby the natural way. Mary and Joseph, in their childbearing years, had a baby the supernatural way. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of backwards, is it not? Kind of upside down a little bit. Zacharias and Elizabeth were past childbearing uh, age uh, uh, years, and, and what did they do? They had a baby the natural way. Mary and Joseph was right in, in the start and middle you know, of their childbearing years, and they had a baby the supernatural way in essence. It, it's just amazing what God does. One couple couldn't have a baby the natural way, but did. The other couple could have a baby the natural way, but didn't. And again, that's just the way God works. God's ways are not our ways. The Bible says there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There's a way which seemeth right unto man, but guess what? It's not. God's ways are not our ways. God does things His way. And then He says, fear not. It's amazing. It's, it's a great lesson for us to learn tonight. God does things His ways, and then He says, fear not. You know, when it comes to salvation, you know what man says? Man needs to work for salvation. Man needs to, you know, help God out some. God says, no, it's by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. That's what God says. God's ways are not man's ways. Man, man wants to try to work his way to heaven. Man wants to try to be good. Man wants to try to help God get him into heaven. And let me tell you something. God says, you can't help me. God's ways are not our ways. When, when it comes to uh, um, uh, the matter of giving, even, the matter of giving, 
You know, people get so confused about this, but I got news for you. And, and you can't always put it on paper and you can't always do this. But I'm telling you, when, when God says you give to me and, and you give me 10 percent and even more, uh, but you give me at least 10 percent and I'll take that 90 percent that you've got left over and I'll stretch it more than the 100 percent without my blessing. And, you know, people say, uh, I don't make sense. We try to think of man's ways. But see, God's ways are not man's ways. Man's ways are not God's ways. And, and we try to do all those things. We, we think about so many of these things that man has their idea on, and God has a completely different idea. God's ways are not man's ways, but then God does things His way. He does things so His way so that we will remember them. And then He says, fear not. That's what He says. Fear not. He comes into our life. He puts something in our lap that we were just didn't expect or, you know, man, just shock us. When Zacharias heard that news that him and Elizabeth was going to have a baby, I imagine you could have just uh, bumped him over. What was it say? Blew him over with a feather or whatever, you know. You could have just done like this. <sighs> He'd have fainted back over. When that angel appeared to Mary and told Mary that she was getting ready to have the Son of God, she was going to be the mother of the Son of God. I got news for you. You could have She'd have fell back over. When those angels appeared to those shepherds out there, you think those shepherds said, well, hey, how y'all doing? Good to see you. Uh, no. Man, they was looking for where, where, where was a hole or something we could get in or some kind of cave or something out here. And Joseph, of course, in a dream even. God comes into our life. He tells us things. And then he says, fear not. Fear not. I believe God's personal message to these folks and God's personal message to us is fear not. We are to taste and see that the Lord is good. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope God is. Now, there's a lot of fear in our world today, is there not? I mean, there's a lot of fear in our world. And, you know, again, some fear, of course, is grounded. Uh, uh, but uh, you, you understand what I mean by the word fear, where fear just absolutely paralyzes us and terrorizes us. Uh, uh, that's ungodly. But you know, there, there are certain things that people are, are, are fearful of. Death. I'm not fearful of death tonight. And if you, as Ray was mentioning, if, if you don't know the Lord, then you ought to be fearful of death. But if you know the Lord, you don't have to be fearful of death. But there's people who are fearful of disease. Do you know there's people who uh, wash their hands 5,000 times a day? There are people who live in, in, in ways because they're just fearful of getting some kind of disease. I don't want to get any kind of disease, but I'm not fearful of that. Uh, uh, some people are scared of doctors. <laughs> right, Joe? Some people are scared of dentists. <laughs> you can hear that. Amen. Scared of dentists. Some people are scared of old age, retirement, disability, nuclear holocaust. People are scared they're going to lose their job and money and reputation and home and friends and respect. You know, we get scared sometimes of stereotype people. Now, again, there's, there's certain things, you know, you, you ought to be aware of and, and we judge certain things, but, you know, Everybody that uh, rides a motorcycle down the street is, is not a, 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 a hippie and a, and a bad person. Uh, uh, right, Harley? Was you named after Harley Davidson? You don't know yet? You hadn't asked, hadn't figured it out? You, you was? Okay. Now you know. You didn't know till the night, but now you know. Yeah, that's right. Or Yamaha or something. That, that, that would be fun. Or Honda. Yeah, that's right. Sure. You know, we, we get scared of, of, of certain, certain things. Uh, of course, you know, any, anybody scared of spiders? Bugs? Snakes? Pit bulls? Chihuahuas? Anybody scared of chihuahuas here tonight? 
You never know. Right? Sharks. Anybody scared of sharks? Good. See, we're getting everybody into the message here tonight, right? Everybody's into the message here. We're getting everybody listening. Uh, lightning, tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, fire. We're scared we're going to get robbed and mugged and murdered or taken hostage. You get scared when the policeman pulls in behind you. You're doing nothing wrong, but all of a sudden your blood pressure goes up for some reason. Or you see one on the side of the road and you say, oh, are they looking at me? I mean, you're doing nothing wrong. And you're not a criminal or anything, but I mean, you know, it's just the way it is. Some people are scared of not being in control. Some of y'all are backseat drivers. <clears throat> Some people are scared of heights and water, crowds, tight places. There you go, good. The dark. I didn't have that on here. Um, some people are scared of every phone call. You know, every time their phone rings, they wonder, oh, this must be bad news. <laughs> well, it might be good news. Some people are scared every time the door, you know, you, the, the door, there's a knock on the door. Oh, it must be bad news. Or a letter comes in the mail or, or whatever. We, um, we're fearful that we're not going to have enough, you know, that uh, all the stores are going to run out of food and the banks are going to run out of money and all this kind of stuff. We're fearful of rejection or embarrassment or failure, financial uh, uncertainty. We're fearful of uninsurability, and on and on we go. And fear can be a terrible experience. Fear can come suddenly. It, it came to Zacharias. It came to Mary. It came to the shepherds. I mean, it came to them, but it, I mean, it just in a, in a moment's notice, they were fearful. It came upon them so fast. And then fear kind of came on Joseph a, a little gradually. Maybe not quite like these others, but, but it, it came on to him. And so as we think about these four situations tonight, you, you have to wonder, what was these people fearful of? What were these people fearful of? Zacharias was fearful when he saw that angel, I imagine, uh, based on, if you kind of read between the lines, he was fearful that the angel had come to tell him that his prayer had been answered. And sure enough, it had been. You're getting ready to have a baby. That put some fear into him. Have you ever been afraid to hear the answer to one of your prayers? Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes it's no, sometimes it's wait. And we've prayed a prayer and we said, well, I sure hope God answers it the way I want Him to answer it, but I'm just kind of scared if He doesn't answer it the way I'm, I want Him to answer it. Fear not. Fear not. Ever how God answers your prayer. Fear not. God's ways are not our ways. I'm going to tell you, you're going to get to heaven one day and, and you are just going to be shocked and shocked and shocked and shocked and shocked of how God was working in your life, kept you from things that you didn't even know He was keeping you from, got you involved in things that you didn't even see as a God thing, but it was a God thing, and on and on and on. Zacharias was afraid because he was an old man. He probably doubted his ability to, to father a child and then to be a father to this child. But see, God's ways are not our ways. God, listen to me, God does things His way, and then He says... Fear not. That's what he says. Fear not. Trust the Lord and fear not. What do you think Mary was afraid of? Well, Mary was, you know, a virgin, and she feared because of what God was asking her to do. She wondered, how am I going to have a baby without knowing a man? You know, she had all these questions running through her mind and through her heart. And, and, and God was asking her to do something that he, he, he never asked anybody else in the whole world from the start to the end to do. Now, there's a lot of things that God uh, have asked, you know, me to do and you to do and others to do, that kind of thing. But there was only one person 
in the entire population of the world that he ever asked to bring his son into this world. And it was her. And she said, me? Me? You know, sometimes we fear because of what God is asking us to do. And we fear because we wonder why God has chosen to use us. We wonder why God is asking this of me, and more importantly, how is He going to do what He says He will do? Why is God asking me to go through this? Why is God asking me to do this? And so we're fearful. And when God brings something into our life where we start wondering all those questions, you know what He says? Fear not. That's what He says. Fear not. You know what we like to do a lot of times? Uh, Lord, can I just suggest a little better plan here? I got, I got some ideas for you. I got, I got some thoughts for you. You know what? You know what God's saying the whole time? He says, just trust me, do what I've asked you to do, and fear not. That's what He's saying. Fear not. Fear not. Don't, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about the next week. Don't, don't worry about that doctor visit. Don't worry about that sickness. Don't, don't get all fretful about things that are, that are coming up. He says, you, just, you do what I've asked you to do and fear not. Fear not. What was Joseph afraid of? Well, uh, he probably wondered about the consequences of Mary's pregnancy, I imagine both to Mary and, and to himself. Have you ever agreed to do what God was asking and then be, became afraid of what the future might hold and then later on found yourself rejoicing because you trusted in the Lord? See, God asks you to do something and, and oh, I don't know, I, kinda, I, I don't know if it's right. I, I don't feel like that's the right thing to do. Well, don't go by your feelings, first of all. Go by uh, the Word of God. And, and we, we end up doing it and then we say at the end, oh, hallelujah, I'm glad I did it God's way. I'm glad I did it God's way. That's Joseph. He was fearful. But in the end, he said he was glad that he did it God's way. You see, most of the things that we're fearful of, most of the things we worry about, never come into play anyhow. Think about this. I want you to think about this. This, this is mind-boggling. In Joseph's case... He heard from Mary that she was pregnant. What's the first thought that crossed his mind? She'd been with somebody else. She has sinned. She has sinned. But see, that was not correct. That was not correct. What seemed sinful, Mary's pregnancy, was actually sacred. It's called doing it God's way. And he says, fear not. What, what seemed to, that would bring death brought deliverance. What seemed, see, when, when he first heard that, he says, oh man, her name is going to be in the mud. And he says, I don't want to drag her name through the mud. I want to kind of do this in a private, quiet kind of way. But still, her name is going to be, have mud all over it. And so the first initial reaction that Mary's name would, would be ruined, it actually has immortalized her name. Now, we don't worship Mary, but I got news for you. She's still to be had in high regard. And think about this. When he first heard that Mary was pregnant, can you imagine that he thought about his dreams and all the plans they had, that all that had been crushed and dashed? <laughs> what seemed would be the end of his dreams, listen to me, became the answer to his dreams. Became the answer to his dreams. See, God's ways are not our ways. And God does things that we don't understand. He asks us to do things we don't understand. He puts things in our life we don't understand. And then he says... Fear not. That's what he said. It's amazing. He says, fear not. We get all out of whack. We get all down. He says, fear not. What were the shepherds afraid of? 
Well, uh, the Bible says, you know, they were in the same country. Uh, 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 shepherds biting in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. They were just concerned about themselves. And they really, you know, wasn't all that concerned about anything else going on. Matter of fact, go back over here to Luke chapter 2. They, they really, they, these shepherds, you, you have to think about this for a moment now. Shepherds is a, is a different profession. What, what do shepherds do most of the day? They sit around talking to sheep. Does that sound like something exciting? How many of y'all know that sheep are the smartest people, uh, smartest animals in the world? Just the opposite, right? Sheep are the dumbest animals in the world. Now, how would you like to sit around and talk to the dumbest animals in the world? Some of you say, well, I work with some of those people. <laughs> or I go to school with some of those people. Well, then maybe that's your lot in life. You know what the Lord says about that? Fear not. Uh, but these shepherds are basically just doing their own thing and then, you know, going their own ways. They're really not interested in, in what's going on in, in other places. Uh, uh, they're, they're uh, you know, they, they didn't keep up with the news all that much. Uh, they, they're really more interested just in themselves, minding their own business. The Bible talks about here in verse number 8, they were keeping watch over, what's the next word? There, there flock by night. In other words, what were they interested in that night? Their flock, their job. They were not interested in some baby being born. Now I want you to hang with me a moment. And so then the angel of the Lord appears to them and says, listen here, fellas. Listen here, fellas. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And that includes shepherds who were just interested in themselves. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now, I'll tell you this, this evening, you say, why did God appear to shepherds? Well, there, there's numbers of reasons, of course. I, I think I've even preached a message about that before. But the idea being they were out there minding their own business, and all of a sudden God intrudes into their life and tells them to go over here and see. Basically, they make up their mind, of course, but He tells them what's going on, and they say, we're going to go see. And do you know they went and saw? And let, let's read what happens when they come back. Look, look at what happens here in verse number 20. The shepherds come in these, in these inter, intervening verses here. And uh, verse 15, it says, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. They came with haste, found Mary and Joseph the babe lying in a manger. And, and they, they made uh, uh, known abroad the saying. But look at verse number 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. In other words, they were out there minding their own business, not interested in anything else that's going on. And the angel of the Lord appears to them, tells them all about this, and they say, well, let's go check this out. They came with haste, and when they left there, buddy, they was jumping up and down and hooping and hollering and, and saying amen and telling everybody else they could tell about it. And they returned, they rejoicing, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. You see, if they had been fearful and not been told to not fear, if they had been fearful, do you think those shepherds would have ever went over there? And what would they have missed? What would they have missed? Do you think those shepherds talked about that night a year later? You think they were still talking about that a year later? Y'all think they was talking about that five years later? You think they was talking about that ten years later? I'm going to tell you right now, they were talking about that and, and, and maybe thinking about that for the rest of their life, maybe every day for the rest of their life. Now, the Bible says they were just basically interested in themselves, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then the idea is, do you think they kept up with Jesus a little bit maybe in some of His ministry as they went along and along? You never know. But I have all idea. Have all ideas. The Lord does things His way, which is, is 
God's ways are not our ways. It, it blows our mind sometimes. What God asks us to do, where God puts us, whatever is going on in our life, we say, you know, why me? Why, why do I have to do all of this? He, he tells you to do this, and then he says to fear not. His ways are not our ways. And he says, I just want you to listen to me and do it my way, and then fear not. Fear not. Zacharias. And Elizabeth, he said, fear not. They ended up having John the Baptist. Y'all know anything about John the Baptist? Jesus said of John the Baptist, there's never been a greater woman, a greater man born of woman ever. John the Baptist. Wow. That would be like, uh, it, it, uh, they probably just a little bit older than me and Dinah, so it'd be like me and Dinah having another baby. We've already got enough. We got enough. Uh, but the Lord might appear to us tonight. I don't know. It would be a miracle. It would be a miracle. Zacharias, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds. Imagine this. Imagine this. And all of them, you know what they did? They went along with what God told them to do. They were fearful about it, but they did anyway. And then they said, no, we're not going to fear. We're going to do what God tells us to do. And then God blessed them and honored that in such great ways. You see, fear neutralizes our faith. You know what Satan wants you to do? He wants you to be a fearful person, a worry, warrior. He, he wants you to be somebody that's going to worry and fret and, 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 and think about all the negative things because fear will neutralize our faith. It will neutralize our ability to reason. It will neutralize our work. You remember God called Gideon. You remember God called Gideon to fight the Midianites? And what did Gideon say? Who, me? He was fearful. God said, come on, get with the program here. And you remember he had 32,000 men. You remember that? 32,000 men at first. What was the first thing God said? Okay, we, we need to, we need to uh, get this down a few. What was the first thing God told him to tell those people? No, that's not the first thing. The first thing was, if you are scared, you can leave. 32,000 at first. He said, if, you, if you're scared, you can leave. 22,000 of them left. Two-thirds, basically, of the bunch left. That left him with 10,000. Then they went to the drinking thing and ended up with how many? 300. 300. That's right. 300. And God won a great victory. But fear just about overwhelmed those folks. See, 300 with God on your side and taking care of business is a whole lot more than millions. Okay? This is what God says. Do it the way I say to do it. God says, trust in me, follow me, fear not. Fear not. That's what he says. Fear makes us disobedient, basically. It really does. It makes us disobedient. You remember the, the parable of the talents? Uh, the, the one that had one talent, you remember what he said? He said, I was afraid and went and hid my talent. He said, I was afraid and went and hid my talent. The other ones invested theirs. But the one with one said, I was afraid. Fear makes us slaves. Fear is bondage. Fear is a trap and a snare. Fear can control and dominate our lives. Fear causes us to say and do things that we would never dream possible. Fear actually alters personality and attitude. Uh, one of my favorite uh, videos on America's Funniest Home Videos when I watch that is the ones where they jump out and scare people. Let me tell you something. You jump out and scare somebody and that alters their personality for just a minute. <laughs> right? That alters their personality for just a minute. Fear, see? Somebody comes up to you and goes, Woo! We're, uh, we're sitting in the living room and me and John's watching a ball game or something. And Dana's in there and she's just minding her own business, reading something or whatever. And, and somebody scores a goal or scores a point or whatever. 
and we go, yeah! She jumps out of her seat. She wasn't expecting that. It gets her every time. It alters personality. Fear can actually result in sickness and in death. Did you know that? You can actually fear yourself sick. Matter of fact, you know what the Bible says in Luke 21, 26? Men's hearts failing them for fear. That's what it says. Fear can actually become our God. You know, uh, I've talked to people before who, who say, well, I just like to worry because it makes me feel good. I like to be fearful. It makes me feel good. Well, that's become your God. That's become your idol. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. So here it is. Zacharias, Mary, the shepherds, Joseph. God came into their lives, scared them really at first a little bit, told them what he wanted them to do, and then he said, fear not. Fear not. That was God's message for them. I think it's God's message for us. Fear 